Hey everyone, so uh, this video right here is how I make my hamburger meat. Um, sorry I didn't get a chance to do more video afterwards of showing you guys how I cook it. I, I like to do it on the grill. Even if it's raining, I have, um, you know, I have three patios like this, all covered with awnings. So even if it's raining, pouring rain, I can still barbecue just fine. Um, <clears throat> I didn't do the video because every time I do burgers, my girlfriend's sister and uh, her husband comes around and you know, they have a burger. They love the way I make them. So, uh, this is just how I make my burger meat. Alright. <clears throat> Peace. Enjoy the video. Hey, everyone. Just staying on. Yeah. Alright. So, you know, I was thinking, I just got back from Vegas and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do for dinner tonight. I, mean, I got back last night and ended up getting Domino's. Surprising wasn't too bad. They keep on changing the recipe and stuff, and I like the one they got now. It's actually not bad. Um, yeah, and I was trying to figure out what to do for dinner, and I was watching. I uh, went on YouTube and saw JB was making uh, hamburgers. <clears throat> I think what really got me to want to do a hamburger is the egg. I'm like, oh, I can go for one of those, and also the baked potato. I've been wanting to do a baked potato for a while. Um, Anyone knows anything about baked potatoes, you kind of cook them. You start even if you don't want it. Anyway, for a little bit of a garden bit, this is a potato that I'm starting. Uh, you can't see it. It's one of those purple black potatoes. Um, my girlfriend likes them. Hard to find in the grocery store, so we were cooking them up one night. And I just took one out of the sack and stuck it in a pot. And now it's starting to grow. It's hard to see it though. Anyway, burgers. <laughs> How do I do my burgers? This thing is crooked. There we go. There we go. Alright. <clears throat> so next burgers. How do I do them? Well, I like to put habaneros in mine. So what I do is I go ahead and I roast these habaneros into, uh, you know, just in the broiler. And uh, this one's already done. This is what they look like. It's charred. Like charred doo-doo. So, the reason I do that, it takes a lot of the potency out of it. And also you can get the skin off. It gives a good roasted flavor. Put them in the broiler for four minutes, two minutes on each side, and this is what they look like. And then I take the foil, close it up, let them steam for a few minutes, and take them out, and then uh, go ahead and scrape the roasted part off, or the burnt skin off, like so. And uh, I know a lot of people use gloves when they handle these kind of chilies, but I've been cooking with habaneros for a long time. My fingers don't burn anymore. I'm used to it. But I'm not brave. But I wouldn't brave sticking my finger in my nose or going in the bathroom and using these fingers. You know, it'll still burn those parts. So Doing this takes a lot of the heat out of it and just leaves a lot of just the sweet flavors. The, Sweet notes of a habanero. Alright, so once you got that uh, all the skin off, you want to just go ahead and open it up like so. You want to get these seeds out. Alright, just use the back side of the knife, just kind of go across it. And there you go. There's my habanero meat. Over there. Same thing with this guy. Open them up. And just slide right across. Like so. Alright. Put that over there. Oops. Now this isn't a topping. This actually goes in the meat. Another tip, when you wash your hands after handling habaneros, do not, do not use 
hot water. Do not use soap. Do not put lotion on. Cold water. Okay. Cold. Colder is better. To be honest. Um, and it's not because of heat or stinging. Uh, it's more so it doesn't open your pores in your hands so that those uh, so the capsaicin can't get into your pores and burn you. So as long as you keep your hands cold, your pores closed, it's not going to burn you. If you put lotion on, lotion automatically as you know, additives in it opens your pores to allow you know the moisture to get in and make it all soft and pretty. Soap does the same thing, and um, yeah, I learned that uh, taking a shower one day. I cut up a bunch of habaneros. I washed my hands in cold water, and then I jumped in the shower. Like ten minutes later, man, everything I touched on my body was freaking flaming hot because I opened up the pores in my hand and all the pores in my body were open from the steam and random parts were burning. So what do you guys think of the... Yeah, I don't know. Not what I was asked for. I wanted to go a little bit further down. The Chinese woman didn't know what I was talking about. She was a barber though. Alright, back to the habaneros. Just go ahead and just give these a quick little chop. Like so. Alright, put that over there. I'll grab my beef out of the freezer. Um, it's not ready yet. So, this is a choice beef chuck blade. Steak bone is thin. It's excellent for um, burgers. But I like to freeze it, it makes it a lot easier to grind, it doesn't, you know, clog up the grinder. But this still needs a little bit more freezing time to go. Alright, so I'm going to give us another 10 minutes in the freezer, 15 minutes, and uh, then we'll get it all ground up and going. Alright, be right back. Alright, everyone. So the meat's pretty good frozen. That's a good, um, it's nice and firm, so it doesn't bounce back too much. That's what you want. Oh, I forgot something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so beef. How are we gonna do this? I don't know. It's tripod. Misbehaving. Alright, let's go ahead and open her up. All this lovely meat out. Now the reason why I, um, I prefer to grind my own beef is I like to know that it's all from the same cow. I mean, there's no guarantee that all these, you know, these are three, you know, three steaks are all from the same cow. It's possibility is not, but close enough. Also, all this fat, you know. Um, this is, I don't know, I would say this is good at 80, 20, maybe even 75, 20. And, uh, yeah. My girlfriend likes, she loves sirloin burgers. Sirloin has no fat in it. So, when I do make sirloin burgers, because she asked for it, I add, uh, Without telling her, I add frozen be uh, frozen butter to it <laughs> because I don't want a dry burger. If there's no fat, sirloin is super super lean. That would be, I would say that'd be like a, if you would buy and grind beef, ground beef, it'd be like 97 three, three percent fat, 97 percent just beef. I need the fat for a juicy burger, so I sneak frozen cubes of butter in it. Alright, so let's cut it into pieces, you know, about way big. Alright, onto the grinder. Alright, uh, you can also, you can always use the bowl. I like to use a plate. You can use your, your, your bowl that came with it. 
put this up to setting number four. And as you cut it, just go ahead and toss it in there. Now, frozen beef, the reason I freeze this is so it doesn't clog. You just want a nice firm beef. And this is going to be fat and all. I'm not removing any fat. Alright, as for the habaneros, I toss it in there as well. A couple of pieces here and there. And then I kind of toss the grind beef a little bit just to get the habaneros evenly distributed among some beef. My cat's not in here trying to steal some of this. He loves stealing beef whenever he can, raw beef. It's not good for his belly, he gets sick every time. He won't stop doing it. I can't always fight him, he'll stop doing it. your habaneros. Get in there, buddy. That's all the beef. That's all we got. That's all she wrote. Turn this up on high. So get the rest of the pieces out. And that's it. Beautiful. Pile of burger meat right there. Mm hmm. Give me some mighty fine burgers. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and saran wrap this. Toss it into the refrigerator. I'm not, going, not planning to make burgers for another few hours. What time is it? It's 4 o'clock. Yeah, I'm not going to make burgers until maybe 9 o'clock. So you can always grind your beef in advance and saran wrap it and just toss it in the refrigerator. Um, I'm not going to make patties at this moment. Uh, don't let this just sit. Now, I used to be a firm believer in seasoning the shit out of my beef, um, but I don't do that anymore. Uh, once you have had just a salt and pepper burger, you're like, why have I wasted all that damn time with the Worcestershire sauce, the you know, chili powders, the paprikas, the onion powder, the garlic powder, you don't need any of that, okay? If you want your burgers to taste like onion, I mean like garlic, stick a clove of garlic in the middle of your burger. If you want it to taste like onions, hey, you saute some onions and you put it on top. Uh, if you want it to taste like chilies, you do what I do. You roast them and you add it to your beef when you're grinding your steaks. If you're buying pre-ground beef already, same thing, same method, roast them, chop them up, and just mix it in with your um, with the ground beef. Uh, there's no need to season it with, you know, there's no need to season it, over season it. There. See? She came a hunting. Came for some beef, huh? What, there's a couple pieces on the floor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
she'll pick up the pieces I got on the floor. That's fine by me. Alright, be right back. <clears throat> <clears throat> 